So, first off, I want to address yesterday's audio. Sometimes I do a fucky and uh, accidentally leave on two different audio sources. So that's what happened then. Uh, you're welcome, and also I'm sorry. Uh, I'll do better. Um, and this is me doing better right now, so in the spirit of doing better, uh, <laughs> let's talk about uh, the recent findings with Pfizer. Because Pfizer has... Uh, come under fire for uh, being full of shit and bad and wrong. And I think that it's good to bring up how bad and how wrong. So let's start with Twitter's fact check, and then we'll move on. Because the essential claim being made is based on what the <laughs> Pfizer heads are saying. It's, it's not wrong. There is no lie being told, basically, where the head of Pfizer says that, hey, yeah, yeah, we didn't we didn't know that that our vaccines would be able to stop transmission. We were moving at the speed of science is literally a thing they said. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> it's fucking self parody. Just <laughs> he... I hate it when people say you can't make this stuff up because you absolutely can usually, but like it's perfect. It wrote itself, you know. Um, but basically, uh, the the thing did so well and got reposted so much that uh the the twitter trending page for it was prefaced with little addendum by reuters saying fact check so let's look at uh let's look at the the, the tweet in question um <laughs> it's it's a thing certainly confusion continues to spread online over the impact COVID-19 vaccines can have on transmission. Reuters facts delves into what was known about this in November 2021. CRX Splinter. So, they, uh, they done did an explainer -oo, And they, they <laughs> confirmed it in the thing. And then tried to downplay it. So... I, I, I read it, which is probably not something that they wanted people to do. And it says, Fully vaccinated individuals with breakthrough infections were found to have peak viral loads similar to unvaccinated cases, which means it didn't cut down on the viral load in their bodies. This study found that vaccinated COVID-19 cases infected 25% of their household contacts while 23% of contacts exposed vaccinated people became infected. However, the authors of the study, and this is where they soften it, warned that because the sample sizes were small, transmission from vaccinated cases could be low as 15% and as high as 31% from unvaccinated cases, which would be consistent with cases being half as infected. Ah. So, according to them... The sample sizes of the study that they cited to prove uh, their point uh, were too small to prove their point. So instead, they need to say that it made another point. <laughs> so, so don't don't quote them because they will just say that you didn't quote all of them because they also said that the thing they said wasn't true. <laughs> so, I said, so the only rational conclusion which can be drawn from this is that if the only purpose of jabs in reducing transmission is reducing initial infection and everyone will get it, then that's worthless. Pfizer, Moderna, BioNTech, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, big business. And I said this in a response to a tweet uh, which I posted that says, here's your challenge. Find exactly one person 
through this whole thing who has not become infected. And by the way, I mean asymptomatic infection counts too. And, and I quoted health officials and the fucking press secretary for the Biden administration. So almost everyone is going to get COVID. Sooner or later, everyone is likely to get COVID. Uh, most people are going to get COVID. These are all people that this administration says it's acceptable to quote. But if you say that, apparently you're the bad guy in both camps because there are plenty of people who say, like, I didn't get infected and I didn't have the jab because I think they completely fucking missed my point, which is that, yeah, because everybody's going to get it and you won't experience, like, symptoms because your immune system was good enough to suppress those and make you better off. So I paraphrased the person who said this thing and said, uh, our numbers don't make it look very good at stopping transmission or preventing infection long term. So instead of looking at our numbers, uh, think about how small our sample sizes are and allow us to use that to snow all the rest of it. Hashtag the speed of science, y'all. So I, I did that. And then I then I quoted the person in the video and said, Regarding the question around, did we know about stopping the immunization before it entered the market? No. We had to move at the speed of science to really understand what was taking place in the market. We had to do everything at risk. So I'm going to play this video for you so you can see it here. Isn't it? So a question then for you, Ms. Small, where I would like a clear answer, please. So there are no misunderstandings. Was the Pfizer COVID vaccine tested on stopping the transmission of the virus before it entered the market? If not, please say it clearly. If yes, are you willing to share the data with this committee? And I really want a straight answer. Yes or no? And I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Um, regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping immunisation before um, it entered the market? No. Uh, these, um, you know, we had to really move at the speed of science to really understand what is taking place in the market. And from that point of view, we had to do everything at risk. I think our Dr. Bourla, even though he's not here, would turn around and say to you himself, uh, if not us, then who? Um, If not us, then who? We had to do everything at risk. Regarding the question around did we know about stopping the immunization before it entered the market? No, we had to move at the speed of science to really understand what was taking place in the market. I'm going to play that again, and then I'll play the rest of it. Because, uh, this is valuable shit to understand here, and I think everybody should. Thank you very much. Um, regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping immunization before um, it entered the market? No. Uh, these, um, you know, we had to really move at the speed of science to really understand what is taking place in the market. And from that point of view, we had to do everything at risk. So they, they didn't know that it would do what they said that it did after it was released. They released something and there was this big ass propaganda campaign that said it would stop the spread. Two weeks to flatten the curve or whatever. And then it just didn't. And then they, they were like, well, we, we didn't know. We were moving at the speed of science. What? I think our Dr. Bourla, even though he's not here, would turn around and say to you himself, uh, if not us, then who? Um, Dr. Bourla actually felt the importance of what was going on in the world. And therefore, as a result of that, we actually um, spent 
two billion dollars at risk uh, of self-funded money from Pfizer to be able to manufacture as it well first of all research develop and manufacture at risk to be able to make sure that we were in a position to be able to help um, with the pandemic and uh, and I think we poured a lot of money into this and that means that you should accept what we did because we did it at risk and poured a lot of money into it our billions that's enough to justify the fact that we have nothing to show, basically. Except that we didn't prove anything we were saying, basically, and uh, except, except the most charitable version of events. And if you don't, well, you just hate our billions of dollars, didn't you? And you're going to ignore all of the the money we made afterward, you're going to ignore all of that because of course you will. Right? You're just going to be a silent little good puppy pleb and do what we say. Belly up to the trough. Um, that's garbage. Who cares if you did this at risk? You didn't prove that it was going to do shit and then the these got mandated by a lot of people. Fuck yourself. Uh. I think that's why I feel very good when a recent paper um, from the Imperial College stated that in the first year of the rollout of, of vaccines, um, we saved uh, four million people. So from that point of view, I feel that uh, actually we were there when the world needed us to be able to make sure that we were able to help people around the world with, um, with vaccination as well as now oral. So four million people. Allegedly, under best case scenario uh, circumstances, four million people. How many people died because their cancer treatments were deferred? How many people died because other treatments were deferred? How many people died because their addiction or abuse rates skyrocketed during the lockdowns? How many people died? <coughs> And how many people uh, had a fertility crisis because of all of this as well, preventing new people from even existing to begin with? Those of you who follow me know that there is one of those and that the lockdowns were really fucking bad for people and caused a lot of deaths. So did you save more lives than you lost due to this massive corporate grift? Doubtful! Probably fucking not. But, but you're just going to stick with the most charitable version of your fucking story, aren't you? Uh, sorry, I need to say this in a British accent. And that, at that point, it will be considered legitimate. And people will quote me and not, uh, ignore the fact that it looks like I smelled something as soon as I say anything. Look at her. Yeah, she just smelled something rank. Maybe like her own bullshit. Um, so... Um, yeah, there's a little more, but I'm not going to play that because it's, it doesn't matter. The point is that like, yeah, this is, is really fucking bad. And, and I just thought I'd bring that up because it's valuable to remember all of this. It's valuable to remember that these are massive corporations and that there were so many news broadcasts and other mega corporate things Brought to you by Pfizer. Hey, if you need a corporate ad, by the way, you can hit me up. I can make your corporate ad exactly what you want it to be. But I'm not going to work for somebody like Pfizer because I have a soul, unlike this woman. But basically, so that happened. And, and, and I thought that would be amusing to bring up in, in conjunction with this, which is a Joe Rogan thing where he talked to the founder of Rolling Stone magazine, <laughs> and he, he brought up this, uh, the, the guy who founded Rolling Stone magazine. ...to regulate the internet? Absolutely. You trust the people that got us into the Iraq war under false pretenses to regulate the internet? Uh, Do you think that makes any sense? Well, wait a minute. The, I would not. The people who got us into the Iraq war... It's the government. ...was the, no, was the politicians. It's that the were, government. In the end, yes, it's the government. But who else? By the way, it's always fucking hilarious when somebody says 
politicians aren't the government or the government isn't X person from the government. Bullshit. Fuck you. Anyway. This is going to regulate. But if they're going to be in power and they're regulating the internet, they're going to regulate the internet in a way that suits their best interests. No, the same way they do with the banking industry, the same way they do with the environment, the same way they do with energy, the same way they do with everything. No, what, but, is, what represents their interests? There's so mu you're talking about so much money mm -hmm. involved in disseminating information in and a very the particular way. World are, right now, are the internet companies are rich. two billion dollars. It's two billion dollars, Joe Rogan. It's two billion dollars. Come on, that's not much money. That's just two billion dollars. Rich beyond belief. Yeah, it's fat, but it's it's a disruptive thing that has never existed before. My, I I think it exists, and I think w where we're at is where we're at. I think we need to move forward collectively as a country with an ethic that respects truth. And that it appreciates opinions and reality and an and, and understanding of things that's not necessarily possible with corporate interest involved in the dissemination of information. But there's no way to do that except through the government. There's no, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Gotta love his, his mealy mouth little voice here being, there's no way to do that except through the government. My mouth couldn't be any wetter and simultaneously drier if I wanted it to be. Mm, I'm Jan Winner. Mm. Like, holy shit. It's, what is it with people with that accent and sounding hollow-mouthed? Like, Larry King, I, I could store an entire horse cock in my mouth while I speak. I'm here with my guest horse cock. Oh. Anyway, um... There's no way that you can do that except through the government. Why I mean, is that? Human nature is not going to change. But the government's not going to change either. But the, gov the government is humans. We need a government. Uh, people are bad, so we need a government made up of people are bad, so we need a government made up of. Government is capable of change. Okay, look, the government regulates, for example, the food supply, or can regulate. Let's take the the food supply. Yeah, the, the Department of Agriculture. Why would they let glyphosate safety. infestate all of our I, foods? I, Let's stay with one thing. Yeah, but that's time. a problem. That's the I government agree. regulating. Well, then we better get better politicians in them to employ better people. I mean, it's not. <laughs> the government isn't politicians. Politicians aren't the government. We need better people, better politicians, because those are people and they're the government. Just fucking cyclically dementia rattling in his stupid fucking defense of tyranny. I guess I can't. Don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Right. Okay. So let's take the uh, SEC or take the Food and Drug Administration's regulates big pharma. On the one hand, we've got a very safe supply of drugs in this country. You know, safe. Their drugs are tested. You know, you don't get too many bad drugs. You know, farm prescribed drugs. Twenty five percent of all drugs approved by the FDA get recalled. So there's that, and then there's also like you know the opioid epidemic. There's the Tuskegee syphilis experiment. There's the polio vaccines that did the opposite of keeping people alive. There's Operation Sea Spray. There's MK Ultra. There's so many examples of U.S. government and pharmaceutical agencies corroborating to create evil circumstances that are bad for anyone. Um, and it, I, I, would never uh, I would never recommend that anybody believe, I would never suggest or remotely hint that anybody should believe that Pfizer is the latest in a long line of that because of $2 billion and lots of money to be made. Would never recommend anybody consider that. That's a terrible thing, don't think it. But, just to be super clear, um, it wouldn't be bullshit if somebody said uh, words like that. I'm trying to skirt YouTube's censorship recommendations that already exist. Um, so to say that social media should be censored is already kind of a trash-ass thing. And so I brought up that in 2018, uh, Matt Taibbi at Rolling Stone covered the fact that Facebook and Twitter censored Reverb Press the Free Thought Project, anti-media, and World Socialist website, and more. 
He left out the part, though, where the platforms were at least partly funded by the governments who'd regulate them. So I took up the slack over here when our page got censored by Facebook. Because the problem is that these platforms are already controlled and funded by the government. Jan Jan Wennervenner has what he wants, but isn't a good enough journalist to know it. <laughs> and so I said that, and I also said, um, that asking government to regulate social media is asking government to regulate itself. The state is the government, banks, corporations, and more. State entities own part of Twitter and funded Facebook. Joe Rogan is right, and John Wenner is a fraud, and the sun remains hot. So, just look at his smug, stupid little face. And the fact that he just believes that, that pharmaceutical drugs are fine just says everything you need to know about him. Little weasel. Get fucked. Anyway, I thought I'd bring all that up because uh, there was a situation with PayPal. For those of you who follow me on the internet, you know this already. But um, the, the PayPal situation was that they had a new policy allowing them to steal $2,500 from people saying things they don't like. And I said that it was going to result in a massive class action lawsuit, uh, <laughs> the likes of which nobody has seen before. Here's a reminder that Peter Thiel is on the steering committee for the Bild Bilderberg Group. The goal was always to have a centralized method of controlling people's finance, and it's working. Make sure not to leave any money in PayPal for any prolonged period of time. If you challenge the mainstream at all, about to move what I have in mind to my bank account now. So I said that before they reversed. Um, and so then they reversed. They backed down due to backlash, allegedly. But keep in mind, now the Bilderberg Group has a database of everybody on social media who'd significantly object to having their finances restricted due to misinformation. And CBDC will let the state shut off your finances. That's fucking true. I am right, and anybody who doesn't like it can eat my asshole, because I'm fucking correct. And and hey, just in time, you know, anybody who's been subscribed to this knows from other videos that I've put out recently that they're basically ramping up and going to put out the CBDC soon, that they're talking about it now. Um, and they're doing that so that they can shut off people's finances for disagreements like they already do in China, like uh, they <laughs> could do in Russia already, like has been done to Russia, and like was done to the Canadian trucker protesters, like was done to everybody who went significantly against uh, insert mainstream narrative. You know, they, uh, they do that already. They just want a way to make it happen for everyone easily. So if they can just centralize your finances and do what China did already and turn your phone red, they got what they want. And they used a pandemic to muscle through contact-free payments and break people's financial structures so that when they decide to uh, implement this, they'll have a bunch of people desperate for cash. So they're going to give people stimulus. That's what they're going to do. They're going to give people stimulus or maybe even a UBI or something, and they're going to tell people... Hey, want it? You have to sign up for our app. You have to go with us into the new world order. That's what they're doing. And, and just in time with all this misinformation noise, they're, they're bringing this up uh, right now because it's becoming winter. Wow. These are the new COVID variants that experts say could fuel a winter surge. With the arrival of the fall and winter seasons, experts are keeping a close eye on... You could tell what the rest of that was going to say, so I didn't include it in the screenshot. They're looking for new COVID variants, they're looking for new ways to control people, and they're already expressing interest in shutting down your finances if you say things they don't like. This was everything that I've been warning people about for years and being called insane or meth, or paranoid, or whatever, for saying, uh, no, I'm clean and sober, and that's why I'm healthier than you, and why the, va uh, why the, the, the virus didn't hit me as hard as it hit many other people, and why I'm still here, 
you know? So let's be real here and say I'm probably healthier than most of the people who would have any criticism of anything I said in this video. If that makes you uncomfortable, too bad. Go to a gym. Eat better. Stop drinking and doing drugs. Get proper vitamin D, C, B, and any other vitamin really levels. Oh, and zinc as well. Zinc is under underwhelmed uh, in, in people's discussion about immune health. But all these things, like, do better. You know, live better anyway. You know, and you'll feel better and be better prepared for dealing with bullshit um, that comes your way. Do that instead of listening to these fear-mongering cunts who make two billion dollars off this sort of thing all the time. Two billion dollars going to this, and then they made many more billions because that's who they are. These people are fat cat billionaires and they can just throw things around all they want. It's almost like they're the problem and that's why they treat you like you are. So that if they can do that, they can prevent anybody from learning anything about smashing the fucking...